Hey, what's up guys and welcome to a new video on my channel. I just want to quickly tell you about my Patreon account you can subscribe to if you want to learn loads of up close tutorials about different tattoo techniques and secrets and tips and stuff. Follow the link at the bottom of the screen right now. Thanks to everyone that has pledged already and is using the service. It's been amazing so far and it's been really cool to see you guys progress with your work. So make sure you go check it out and let's head straight into this video. What's up YouTube family? Today we're gonna to do another video while I have the day off. Got back super late last night, booked the day off today because I know I'd be super tired. Just watched Man United play. If you're into football, then you would know we beat Chelsea 2-0. Amazing game. I'll probably put some footage in right now if you're interested. <laughs> So yeah, proper sick game. Really glad I went, got tickets. Shout out to Junior for that. But yeah, today we're gonna be talking about different needles and different tattooing situations. Yeah, I, I wanted to do this video because a lot of you did see the other video uh, with different techniques and stuff. So I thought I'd elaborate on that and then go into the techniques and then what needles I would use personally. Like all this is my my opinion um, and like my technique as well. So different situations and different needles, different artists like to use, um, but that suits them. So all this is sort of my, my sort of uh, experience and preferences and stuff in this situation. So let's do it. So as you can see, needle situations is the title, right? And I've, um, I've gone, I've gone in and, and sort of dissected each kind of situation that I normally deal with in it on a day-to-day -day basis. So I, I, I've done portraits, um, color packing or black packing, stippling, small details, including like eyes and stuff like that. Or like if you're doing like a, a portrait and you've got like a jacket or something, then small details, um, like eyelashes and eyebrows and stuff like that. Large areas, so big areas that I need to cover and then small areas, small areas I need to cover. So pretty straightforward, right? If you do want to know any more situations that you want help in, then just smash a like on the video first of all and smash a comment in the comment section. So let's, let's go straight ahead with this. So we're going to start with portraits. So portraits, I would use um, bug pins. Bug pins take this for me because they're super, the way the needle is um, made up. So this is going to be a normal needle, right? I'll just, this is going to be a normal mag needle configuration. Now bug pins, so bug pins, each needle individually will be a smaller diameter. So it will be a smaller diameter and they're going to be more compact as well. So, so bug pin needles will be like this. They'll be like super smaller and super compact if you can kind of get that. So you're going to see basically what this means is, say if you was to go with a 17 mag, right? So this is like a 17 mag, this one here, yeah? Even though it's not 17 things, but pretend this is a 17 mag. Okay, for argument's sake, let me just make this up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So that's a 17 mag, right? Now, a 17 mag will be the same in, in a bug pin. So you'll, so you'll all, so you will have 17 points and 17 needles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So 17. So <clears throat> as you can see, the distance between this is a lot shorter than, than this distance, right? Um, which makes, so when you're, when you're looking at a 17 mag, even though they're the same needles, the same needle count, this is a smaller diameter because the needles are smaller and they're more tightly compact, which makes that needle more smoother. So um, when you're doing like portrait based stuff, um, you will find 
you won't see needle marks as, as much as you would with a conventional curve mag or magnum, whatever you're using. Um, so this is a bug pin, just so you don't get confused. But, so, portraits, I would use bug pins. Bug pin needles. Bug pin needles are the best um, for portraits and smooth blending. Um, I'm gonna put smooth uh, blends. Um, and I would all, always most certainly go long taper with this because again, in previous videos, um, you can have more passes um, without traumatizing the skin as much as a short or medium taper. So it allows more passes on skin, right? So that's that one. Uh, portraits, sm anything smooth blending, I would go with bug pins as well. So it's, even if it's not portrait based or you just really wanted to do real, real, real smooth blended work, I'd always most certainly go for a long taper bug pin. Um, you can't go wrong. And like I said here, just be careful because if you're ordering a 17 mag, um, bug pin and you and you're not using cartridges you're using individual needles and then you're going to get your grip make sure your grip isn't a 17 always go down a grip to 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 so a set, even though this is a 17 mag uh bug pin needle it's going to fit into maybe like a 15 mag grip because it's a smaller surface you know what i mean it's a smaller um size sorry so yeah just be just always go down on the grips but if it's a cartridge needle then it's fine um just order the cartridge and it comes ready made with the with the housing as well because it's all housed in a cartridge so it's sweet right so packing <clears throat> i would go for uh packing small uh circular motions like this like pack 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 yeah just small circular motions in one big s going into one big circle that's how i normally color pack like this and then add on to a different bit as well. Make sure you go into this bit like that, right there, like this, yeah? So I would go for packing, it, it's easier to pack. Sorry about that, uh, my camera died. So it's easier to pack um, tattoos with a small taper, a small, uh, a medium, medium uh, to small taper. Um, because generally you're going to go over the area once or twice. You're not going to keep blend, like going over it in like a blended kind of thing like you would with soft shading. So you would do multiple passes. But with packing, you would normally just go into the skin once, um, spend a few moments there. And then, you know, maybe if you've missed a spot, say if you do this, you've missed a bit of that. You just go in and just correct that like that. Um, so you wouldn't normally necessarily go in into the skin super... Um, crazy and risk you know so i would go medium to small taper and it just allows the um <clears throat> allows the ink to just go in there a lot easier than a long taper would um also it depends on your machine as well like it, I, I would f i find um longer stroke machines um i'm gonna i'm gonna go longer stroke machines um, work, work better, um, for this type of tattooing. Um, and that's purely because you don't have to dip as much, um, with a short, short taper. So maybe like a four mil, four millimeter, four millimeter, uh, stroke. And so with this uh actually i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, while i'm doing this i may as well go with the strokes as well so portraits i would go 2.5 millimeter stroke um to mm, 3.3.5 3.25 3.25 millimeter i would say that's the best for getting real smooth blends um but i would try and aim for 2.5 because I use that personally and it is, you do feel a difference between the 3.25 to the 2.5 um, cams that I have changed on my injector. So I would definitely go for that. Um, but again, if you can find, you know, the 3.25 work, works best for you, then it's, then it's fine. Um, 
but solely for shading, smooth, smooth, smooth blends, I would go for the 2.5. Um, <clears throat> again, with packing, I would go for a four, a four mil stroke maybe. Or, and you know, you could easily go with the 3.25 as well. You could hit into this. So 3.25 to 3.5 millimeter uh, strokes are pretty, um, are pretty, uh, you know, sort of a, a good all rounder. But if you wanted to sort of, if you do find that you're doing more smoother blendings and, you know, and you want to sort of have a machine for, for blending and then a machine for packing and lining, then just set up machines. I would go for a 2.5 machine for smooth blendings and, and, and shading and stuff. And then I would go, uh, I would have a, a separate machine um, set up for a, a four mil stroke for packing and lining. Um, so yeah, so but yeah, having a longer stroke machine doesn't necessarily mean that um, it's gonna uh, impact uh, this the skin as much as you think it is. It's more gonna be because a lot of it is hand techniques and stuff. So a lot of it is how much how how much ink um, the needle will will take will suck up from the ink cup um, and. It, having a four millimeter stroke uh, machine will allow you to to dip into your ink less because it will just soak much more um, ink up rather than a two point five. So um, that saves you know. So you can do large areas like this without. So on a two point five mil machine, you would say you would be like right dip and then you go like this and then it would run out. Um, and that before having to dip again so you do small areas which can then leave your work inconsistent um so with a four mil it would suck up so much ink that you would just be able to do a real large area without having to dip again and then you'd probably have to dip and then you do, do another large area before having to dip again so you would get much more of a consistent thing because you wouldn't have to then go back into it if you know what i'm saying so Stippling, right, stippling, I would use, I mean, any kind of, I, I, I don't think long taper or short taper really matters. I would probably stick with medium for this because I would probably go for medium and then maybe go to small taper um, liners for this. And I, I, I would go for... Um, I would probably go for like nothing above a five. Um, so anything less, is that a less or more than sign? I think that's a less. Th I, I would go anything less than a five, five, um, five round liner, five round liner. So I would use a three as well. I'd use a three, three round liner um, and even a single and then a one, one round liner. Um, in this, uh, I wouldn't go above a five for really consistent, nice, smooth results with stippling. Um, I'd probably go for medium to small taper needles as well. Um, you could probably use a tight, a tight needle as well, a tight liner. Um, but then you, you know, that's just basically like a bug pin, um, and it's it, and um, it's good. It's going to be more tightly compact. Um, you're going to have a more of a tight angle on it. I probably wouldn't use tight liners, to be honest. I would probably just use, because I think it's more consistent um, with a medium and a small taper, just normal configuration um, with those. So stippling's pretty straightforward. Um, stippling technique on its own as well is going to be always um, pretty good on the skin. So um, that's, that's uh, you don't have to worry as much as packing or stuff like this um still you can traumatize the skin if you do go over the area loads but stippling technique in itself is a pretty a pretty good technique to use for um for uh you know to reduce um what's the word i'm looking for to reduce skin trauma so um right so for small details moving on Small details, I would use um, I would use a liner, to be honest. I like using liners for my small details. Uh, say if it was like a button or something, I would use like a three round liner for most cases or like a five round shader, uh, round shader, 
so I'll just put shader so you can see that five a five round shader um, liner um, and then a seven round shader as well and I would just use the, the normal ones. I wouldn't use bug pin or nothing like that. I would literally just, I use the five round shaders and the seven round shaders from Shayam. Um, and their five round shaders and, and seven round shaders are amazing. So that's what I would use for the small the small details, um, like eyes or eyelashes and stuff. I would use a three round liner. Um, and say if I wanted to like smooth blend, um, again, you would you would use the techniques that I, I showed you in, in the last video the same sort of techniques would apply to use the sh round shader and stuff. So, I'd, you know, with, with, um, the brush motion, again, this is a round shader because it's round as well. I would just be going like this, you know, I'd just use the brush motion, the same as what, what I would do with a mag. Um, but just go slow and steady with a, sh a round shader because you have less area to make, con to make a consistent blend with. So I would just be careful with that. Um, yeah, three round liner, five, a five round shader. Um, you could go less than this as well, but I probably wouldn't do that. Um, I wouldn't go like a one round liner because it's, it's, it's too thin really to get a nice consistent result from, in my opinion. So I'd go with a three round liner, five round shader, and then maximum I, I would go like a seven round shader um, in scenarios like that. Um, large areas, I would use large. So if I was like uh, shading... Um, large areas, say like a, a big thigh piece or whatever, I would still, I would use uh, 15, uh, it depends on what you're doing. So if you're, if you're color packing a large area, um, color packing a large area, because this is, large areas is such a big umbrella term, um, it could mean anything, do you know what I mean? So if I was color packing a large area, I would use a uh, like a medium to small taper taper a big magnum um, packing you could use straight magnums um, but I just find curved magnums for me are just so a straight magnums this right so you got a straight magnums that yeah and then a curved magnum the configurations like this so I would I like to use the curved magnum because I think it's 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 better on the on the skin and you can shade with this as well and you like I find it quite difficult to shade with a flat mag as much as I would with a curved mag that I can get a smoother blend with with a curved mag. Um, so with large areas color packing, I would probably use um, a curved mag uh, purely because I could probably use that to shade with as well instead of just color packing. Um, and you can color pack with a with a, sh a curve mag. I don't care who you are, and yeah, you you can you can use a curve mag to color pack with. So I'd probably use a curve mag, and I'd probably use like a fifteen to I don't know like as as big as the size goes really. So I wouldn't go any any less than a um, a fifteen mag. Probably wouldn't use a buck pin on a large area because um, it doesn't really matter as much. Um, because you're just gonna be shading, I, I suppose, or color packing anyway, so it doesn't really matter with the uh, the super smooth blends that you'd need in like a proper main piece. So like normally this is like background work. So I'd use a, a 15 mag and I would go up to, well, the largest size they do. I've just definitely spelled that wrong. Largest size they do. Um, they do, um, and that's, uh, I think Shane goes up to a 27 curve mag, or was it a 21? I can't remember. I can't remember. I haven't ordered them for a while because I've got loads. Um, I think it's I think it's a 27 mag. Um, I would use a curve mag as well. Um, yeah, I would use a curve mag. Curve mag. Um, and... That's pretty much it for large areas. I mean, because you can you can shade with this as well. So I would I wouldn't go any less than a fifteen. I'd probably not even go any less than a seventeen mag, to be honest. Um, which is the next jump up. So I'd probably go seventeen to twenty seven, or however large they do. Um, make sure you do have a machine that can um, push a larger mag like the. 
Dragonhawk Mast Pro that I used in my previous videos, that would really struggle to push a 27 or 21 mag because it's, it's I mean, it struggled to push a 17 um, because it's just not a strong enough machine for it. Um, the injector, on the other hand, of a, of a motor rating of 18 volts, maximum 18 volts, like that would just smash the shit of the 27 mag, you know what I mean? So yeah, and then small areas, I would probably go um, backwards of backwards of a 15 or 17 for argument's sake. Um, so small areas, fifth, seven, uh, if it's background work, I would probably um, 17 mag to, I don't know, like a nine mag or something, nine mag. I don't necessarily like in my in my uh, in my needles. I don't go any less than a nine mag. Um, again, it'll be curved as well, curved and curved. Um, and I find doing small areas. I find using a fifteen a fit a fifteen curve mag on smaller areas because you can use the side of of this if you did want an even smaller area than the actual full range of uh of of needle you can tilt your machine say if you're like shading like this you can tilt your machine and then just shade with this part of the needle because it makes it a smaller area um and on curve mags it's it's better to do that because you have the curvature of the needle to allow that more much more than digging this really far in the skin and then this and then this and then this and you just get an in inconsistent result i find on the straight mag so um i like to use all my needles for for multiple types of techniques throughout my tattoo and that's why i would probably go with the curved over a straight any day um so yeah so small area uh, and again i would probably because Smaller areas are easier to put in the skin, by the way. Smaller needles are easier to put in the skin than, la than la larger needles because you would need a bit more force, um, again, from your machine or your hand to, to really puncture the skin with a 17 or a 27 uh, curved mag because it's a wider surface area, it's a bigger surface area. So you, you will need more force to enter the skin with that. Rather, It's like lining with an 18-round liner, you're going to have to push your needle in a bit you would feel that you're putting more force with your hand to put the needle in a, a larger needle than uh, say if you was using a three round liner you you feel like you're you know if you put as much force in as you would with the 18 you would just blow the lines out completely because it just goes in so it's so much easier with a smaller needle because it's, it's a, a less surface area so um try not to get all scientific on you i would probably go nine mag curved to 17 mag curved um if you're shading i would probably use just a, a, a normal uh mag but if if you really wanted to really smooth consistent shading with the background as well um if you were after that then i would probably use a bug pin as well um but bear, bearing in mind um the needles say if you're using a 27 mag curved bug pin it's more going to be like a 21 mag curved or if you're using a 21 mag bug pin it's more going to be like a 17 mag because it is that smaller size so just be careful of that um with the bug pins but with a large area if you it doesn't necessarily matter to the smaller areas because it's a smaller needle if you you are using bug pin but the larger areas just be careful of that different change because Different exchange because it's going to be a smaller needle even though it's a larger needle so just be careful of that but yeah that's pretty much it man like it looks like a whole bunch of mess but if you got this far through the video then thank you um smash a like on the video if you did find this video um helpful and uh yeah so guys if you did find that video helpful and useful please smash a like on the video that's going to be amazing for me and this video to to make sure it reaches so many more people to help more people as well thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video guys take care